how much time you spend on the task. You are not judged how much uh, how much you spend in the office, how how much effort you put in. You are judged by results only. Uh, and that's the difference because no one, when you are working remotely, no one sees like how much time you spent on the task. And all the all people care about is the task is done so that your uh, developers, your designers, they can move on with the uh, development or design. So, and the uh, other, other thing is that when you are working remotely, when you are working in office, first of all, you are still working but there is a lot of chit chat there is a lot of communication happening with your team with your teammates with your colleagues so there is a lot of social uh there is some social aspect when it comes to working in office when you are working in remote you don't have colleagues next to you you are not gonna speak about weather or ask them how their parents doing how their kids doing so uh you do need some type of hobbies other than work you do need to have you do need to get involved in some type of social activities so for my case i'm uh, just because I, since i started working remotely i basically went and i subscribe for like a debate club so that i can speak with people i subscribe for like uh, toastmasters there's a new horizons toastmasters in toronto it's a very good one so i'm every week i'm there and I'm practicing my communication, I'm speaking with people, I'm communicating. So you have to substitute the social life that you will get in office with something when you are working remotely, because otherwise it could be very lonely and people actually get depressed. Right, right, that's really good. Um, but a lot of people do like the freedom of working from home. Um, so there's a lot of pros with that as well. You set your own schedule, you know, you don't have to work the traditional nine to five kind of mm -hmm. Um, so for people who are interested in landing like a remote role, either full time or maybe some of you here just want it part time, something that you can do on the side and make maybe like, you know, one to two thousand dollars per month extra or something like that. So mm -hmm. can you share with us like some of the websites that you use to find these remote jobs? Yeah. And, yeah. Let's start with that. So uh, most of traditional websites, they do, they are not optimized for remote jobs. So you basically, for remote job, you have to go for like a niche websites. For example, if you go to AngelList, angel.co, uh, they have a lot of remote job offerings. Uh, uh, can you guys speak up? Yep, yep. So you, you got to go to AngelList. You got to go, if you are going to Indeed, you have to put like work from home type of options. Uh, you can go to weworkremotely.com. You can go to remotive.com. You can, you have to go to remote.com. So these are the websites that that basically their core focus is the remote job. You are not going to able to find a remote job if you are if you are searching on like I don't know LinkedIn or if you are searching on monster.com. These job don't these jobs don't exist there, and uh, you have to create your profile in some niche websites for example like again angel list remotive remote.com uh, we work remotely.com skip the drive.com uh, work from home.com so these are the websites you have to go to find a find a remote job and as helena said you can actually a lot of times find a part-time remote job if that's what you are interested in but it's going to be really really complicated to balance it with your with your like office job because uh, even if you are working remotely, and even if you are working uh, like a couple of hours per day, you are still gonna get a lot of communication from your teammates. They are gonna still request uh, some documents. They are gonna still request some something that you that you have to do. But, but while you are in office, so I would say if you are searching for remote job, search for like full time remote job. Don't focus on part time remote job because right. uh, it's going to create a lot of complications. You are basically going to be unhappy and kind of underperforming in your full-time office job and remote job. So right. if you make up your mind that you are going to go for a remote job, just go for it. Don't go for like part-time, don't balance it. Right, right. Um, okay, so how did you land your remote job? Like what website did you use and how did you market yourself for yeah. that? So for the most part, I'm using angel.co uh, because I am um, I have like a focus. My focus is startups. That's my master degree. That's my master thesis. So I have a lot of interest with startups. For startups, you go to angel.co. Mm -hmm. uh, and they do have like you can filter the results, the job results based on like uh, your preferences. And one of the preference could be work from home or office work. Right. Uh, so that's how I landed my job. And uh 
be prepared that when you are searching for like remote job, you are competing like with everyone in the world, basically. So at that point, it doesn't matter whether you are American, whether you are Canadian or you are in Europe, India, it doesn't matter. So for each application, you probably will see like a couple of thousand of applicants. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure you are somehow different. And the way to make sure you are different is to have a like good portfolio. So it's, it's actually paramount to have like a portfolio of projects or products you created so that you can demonstrate it. Mm -hmm. Also something to consider is that when you are, when you are applying for a remote job, a lot of, this is from employer side, a lot of employers, they want you to, to, to be like pretty much in the same time zone. Doesn't necessarily need to be like exactly the same, but like plus minus two hours from your time, from, from their time zone so that you will have a lot of overlapping hours with the, with the, with the like core team. So for example, I'm, I'm working with US guys a lot, like America-based companies a lot. So if it's like Silicon Valley company, it's still okay because the difference is three hours. But a couple of times I work with Eastern European companies like England. So the, in that case, you gotta either like wake up really early or go to sleep really late because otherwise you will not have like a, enough time with the with your core team working in Europe and you need this communication so you you consider the time belt as well right right so how did you um so you, you said like you mentioned something earlier that like when someone applies for these jobs there's like thousands of applicants yeah. so how did you make sure that you stood out from the crowd yeah you gotta have portfolio because most of the applicants they do not have portfolio mm -hmm. So you have to have portfolio. Also, uh, when they give like a job description, uh, you have to figure out what exactly they want to, what exactly they are looking for. So if, you, if they are looking for like technical project manager, you are, uh, which I am, so you will need to demonstrate like how your technical abilities match the technical skills of the job. Mm -hmm. You have to be really, really on point because again, you are, com you are basically competing with like all, all, everyone in the world. So what did you have in your portfolio and how did you put it together? So I had a successful experience with the startup, actually. The startup I was working with, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was very technical. It's basically like IT bootcamp, creating IT bootcamp. So I was also teaching the IT to basically juniors. And uh, it got me really technical. I know a lot of like development languages, whether it's iOS, whether it's Android. I know a lot of like software and web development. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am pretty good with design, UI, UX design, or even graphic design. I'm pretty, not very good, but pretty decent. So uh, when I'm applying for a project manager job, I'm, I will make sure I, I show this technical ability so that they know that I'm going to speak the same language with their, their designers. I'm going to speak the same language with their developers. Because one thing about developers, they don't like when, when they explain to you something technical, you do not understand it. Mm, yeah. yeah. They want... Ideally, they, they want to work with the engineer, basically, with someone who has an engineering degree. So I will make sure I, I will say to them, okay, guys, you know, I have an engineering master and a bachelor degree. So I will, I, I'm going to be very fluent with the technical language. I'm going to be very good with your engineers. Also, if I'm applying for a startup, I will make sure that I, I show them that I, I used to work in a startup. And startup I was working with, it's Armenian Code Academy. Uh, it is it, doing phenomenally well. So I will tell them like I have a successful experience with startups. I know it's, it can be tough, but I know it, the reward is there. So this will demonstrate then that I'm basically ready for a little bit of chaos that startup world brings. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready to work like sometimes in startup, you work like 50, 60 hours. Yeah. So they know that I'm ready for it. I'm, I've gone through it. So I'm not going to quit or I'm not going to be like depressed. So th yeah. these are the things they want. Uh, and remember one thing, like when you are, when you go face to face interview, you are talking with someone, but it's not just your voice they hear, right? They also look right. at your gestures. They also look how you kind of behave yourself. But, uh, but when you are just in front of camera, it's basically your voice. And it's right. basically what you said in PMP, there is, the, there's the low, right? So it's just 80% of whatever you are saying is, whatever people understand from what you are saying is basically transmitted from nonverbal communication. Right. So this nonverbal communication is absent when you are working remotely. So you have to be really convincing with your, with your like voice, with your, with whatever yeah. you are saying.
Yeah. So when you were going into these interviews, did you have like a website with your portfolio or did you mean a portfolio was just your resume and your cover letter? Uh, they normally ask for the website. I, at the time, I didn't have a website, so I basically copy past all the links of the companies I worked for. Yeah. And uh, I put everything in a Google Doc, like at some designs, like templates, basically. Yeah. So I show them, okay, this is the guys what I worked for. This is the feature I feature I come up with. Yeah. The, basically, you like you show them what you did. And okay. You will not be able to show them if you don't have it on paper somewhere. Right, right, right. So you kind of have like, you know, maybe like a one pager or two pager for every project that you manage. Like this is the project, this is the company, this is, you know, the software uh, part that I implemented kind of thing. Yes, exactly. And uh, mm -hmm. another thing about the remote job is that uh, there is some legal complications actually. So a lot of companies based in U.S., they have legal requirements to hire someone only in US. Mm. So if you see that uh, someone is offering like 401 uh, type of coverage, so it means it's for US employees only. Mm. So don't waste your time if you are not US citizen or green card holder. So for, for I'm Canadian. So if I see someone is offering like health insurance or 401 coverage, I know this is the job for US people only. So right. even if they're very good, they are not going to, be willing to consider you because they want to hire someone within the US. Whether it's for tax reasons, sometimes I was told it's because one of their customers, they, if it's like government co government contract, so it, it's kind of a hard requirement, they cannot work through it. Right. In other times, it's just like, could be patriotic feelings. In other times, it could be just some requirement. In other time, it could be just because accounting and bookkeeping is, will, will be just kind of easier but if you see that 401 or full dental coverage or something like that, just don't apply if you're not US citizen because right. you're missing your time. Right, and when you apply, did you just go to these websites and just apply like during the normal process or I've um, also heard some people like they seek out the hiring manager when they are applying for jobs? I have tried both ways actually. The mm -hmm. seeking out the hiring manager one, it kind of never works for, for me at least. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that for some people it does, but not for me because, uh, yeah, a couple of times I found a hiring manager in LinkedIn. I messaged him or her like, hey, this is, this is Arthur. I send my application and they will yeah. always direct me to like someone in the company. So right. they will give you like email, like, please follow up with this person, for example, or please direct your question to this person. Right. So it doesn't really work. And uh, it took them, it takes them like a lot of times to reply. So mm. by the time they reply to you, it, it could be already too late. So right, right. the best bet is just to go to a regular process. So you just go through the regular process. You submit your resume, your cover letter. And then, so out of um, how many jobs did you apply to before you land one of the jobs? Like what's your success ratio <laughs> with applying for these? So, okay. Uh, I think it's about... Uh, so I think it's about like 10% or 5% of success ratio. Okay, that's pretty but high. It, yeah, it's very it's like I've been to very different situations when I was first looking for the job, when I was just yeah. out of university. So yeah. this is I consider to be like very good case. But mm -hmm. uh, when I'm applying, that just applying to something, it takes a lot of time because I'm, I'm, bearing, I'm being very meticulous. I'm making sure whatever I'm doing is kind of uh, very much in line with what they want to. So right. you can't just like shoot out to, like your template cover letter to them because they hate it. Yeah, so yeah. You spend a lot of time on writing like single applications. So I would say like if you are applying 20 to 20 different companies, it's basically like 20 different days. You right. can't give them like templates and consider like, consider to be doing a good job. They will never come back to you. Right. Any resume tips, any resume or cover letter tips that you can share to kind of like boost yeah. Uh, uh, I think, to be honest, I think I'm pretty sure people don't look at my resume. Okay. When I'm applying for it. Like if you have a website, if you have like a Google Doc with your projects, mm -hmm. people are going to be much more focused on what you did on that projects. So mm -hmm. resume wise, just make sure it's like, it's, it's kind of precise. It's nice. It's nice looking. It's good design. You don't, you don't have typos and stuff like that, but, uh, the 
basically the deal breaker or deal maker is going to be your whatever whatever work you have done before. Mm, okay, great advice. Okay, now let's move on to the interview. Um, yep. What is the interview? So like, okay, they say, Arthur, we love your application. We want to interview you. What is the interview process for a typical um, like project manager role look like? And what are some common questions that they ask? Yeah, uh, so uh, the process wise, it's normally like four or five like different levels of interview, different like stages of interview. Oh, wow. Okay. Based in my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so first one, it's always just kind of a chit chat. First one is kind of get to know each other. Yeah. Uh, it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. It's, it's not long. They just want to talk to you to make sure you are like a normal human being. You <laughs> You are, what, they will ask you something like, okay, what do you want from life? What is your career goals? These type of questions you will, you will receive during any interview, whether it's open. Right. They want to make sure that whatever you want is aligned with the company so that you are not going to leave in six months. It's mm -hmm. short interview, it's kind of informal. Okay. So if you pass that, it's going to come to technical interview. Uh, mm -hmm. Technical interview means it's going to take at least one hour at least one hour, you are gonna have a couple of people interviewing you. So for project manager or product manager also, I had people I had three, four people interviewing me. So it's gonna be head of product or director of product, it's gonna be a couple of senior product managers and uh, basically like a product manager. Mm -hmm. So and they are gonna go through like a lot of details, a lot of details. They can ask like very particular questions about the feature you implemented, or they can come up with something like what is the product you love, why you love it, what will we change about it. So they are going to be very, you have, you'll fail if you are not good prepared, if you are not prepared, this like really good. Okay, so how do you prepare for your interviews? What's your so process? There, normally there are like list of questions they will ask. Mm -hmm. So for product manager or project manager, if you're a project manager, they will yeah. definitely ask about Agile. Okay. So no one is doing waterfall in uh, remote project management like i've never seen it so most of the time it's even either like agile scrum or some type of combination of agile scrum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they will they will ask you about them uh, scrum ceremonies uh, they will ask you about the, how you handle kickoff meeting they will ask you about uh, the scrum just like daily stand up like scrum review retros how you can a lot of a lot of information is going to be asked about how you handle communication, basically stakeholder relationship, mm -hmm. how you are communicating with stakeholders, how you are eliciting your requirement. Uh, they will ask you what's your communication style. They will ask you like how you want to interact with your team, how you manage your resources. They will ask you about the resource leveling for sure, because uh, like in remote teams, like resources are always limited and they have like hundreds of projects running at the same time. So we'll definitely ask about how you level your resources for the particular project or projects. Right, right. Uh, yeah, and uh, they will ask you about your hobbies. So when, you, when they are asking about your hobbies, you want to say something they want to hear basically while not lying. So in my case, I'm going to always go for Toastmasters because it's communication, it's leadership. So mm -hmm. it, it's basically what they want to hear and I'm actually doing it. It's not like I'm faking it. But uh, you definitely expect this because communication is very important. They are going to ask you how you keep yourself accountable while working remotely. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. Because uh, a lot of employers, they have this feeling that if they are not standing next to your chair, you kind of will drop the ball or you will kind of drop the deadline. You are not going to work properly. So they are going to ask you like how you keep yourself motivated how you keep yourself accountable, uh, what are you willing to do to deliver it on time. So expect these kind of questions specifically when you are doing a remote, when you are applying for a remote job. Mm. So when you're doing a remote job, maybe some people would think like the salary would be lower. Is that true? Is that a misconception true or not? It's misconception actually. Mm -hmm. you will, actually, it's partially true. It's mm -hmm. partially true. But you don't want to apply to the company who uses like remote job as a disadvantage of yours. Mm -hmm. So I will, as a general rule, I will not apply to this type of companies. Mm -hmm. 
there are very there are like number of very good companies who are hiring remotely only and they are paying like decent us salaries decent canadian salaries mm -hmm. if you are a very experienced project manager it's like starting from six figures basically mm. so from 100,000 yes what's the what's kind of like the range for the salary if you're a technical project manager with like five plus years of experience, I would say like you are looking for, if you're working remotely, you are looking for like, I don't know, like from 90,000 US to 150, 60, something that is. Okay. So it's the same, same rate as someone working in the office. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. And the, the only thing is that you're now working from home. So you're kind of, almost getting the best of both world, both worlds in some in some senses yes yeah. yes uh, there is a disadvantage because when you have a question you are not like there is no one readily next to you so that you can ask it right. if you have some idea you can't brainstorm it with the person sitting next to you because there is no one right uh right. so there are certain disadvantages but you will normally get used to it and you will normally like develop some relationship with your teammates so that you can just shoot them like quick Slack message, hey, like, hey, what do you think about this idea? Right. You'll right. be able to work and find a workaround. Perfect, right. So how do you uh, properly manage distributed uh, teams and stay motivated because of the disadvantage that you just um, mentioned? So uh, yeah, when, you're, when you are managing distributed teams, it's very important to uh, to be very detailed, like unknowingly, de un unknowingly detailed. So if you are doing project management, if you assign someone a task, mm -hmm. you have to make sure it's very detailed. You have to make sure there is acceptance criteria against that task. You have to make sure there is like a like actual design attached to this task. You have to make sure there is scenario attached to this task so that like, people know what is the context of the feature they are building. Because let's imagine you don't, you don't do that. And the uh, developer has a question. So developer, most of the time they, if you are working, like I have a developer working in Argentina. Okay. So if I, if I, if I'm not detailed enough, so it means he will send me a message asking for details, but at that time it, it's going to be either like nighttime here or I will be not, I will not be on my desk. So when I see it and reply to him, he's going to see the next day. So basically you postpone the project, postpone the task by a day, which is uh, not the way to go. Right. 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 So, so you we... have to be very detailed. Mm -hmm. You have to, keep giving people credit. So public recognition is very important when you're working remotely. You have to make sure like everyone in the Slack group know that this person is just ahead of the schedule. We have to make sure they know that this person is doing like some hard task and he's just championing through it. Right. People like it and uh, your developers will like you. They will appreciate you. They will, they will make sure that your tasks have priority if, if you just give them a credit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned Slack as one of the tools that you use to manage your, your uh, distributed remote team. Um, can you give a list of tools that you use to manage these distributed teams that you have to manage? And, uh, and also, how big are the teams that you manage as well? Uh, so, uh, I have one team. It's uh, basically one, three people, mm -hmm. developers. I have another team, which is eight. Eight, okay. And it's like small to middle size. Mm -hmm. And normally, like if you are in remote, your, your team will rarely be more than eight people, actually. Okay, okay. Because at that point, it's getting really hard. You don't need more than eight developers. You don't need actually more than like four yeah. developers plus like one or two QA guys plus one designer. It's, it's already plenty. Yeah, that sounds like a plenty of work, yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't need, uh, and it's not the best practice to have like 20 people team because at that point, just like no one knows who, what everyone else is doing. Right, absolutely. Um, so how, what did you, what do you do to, uh, sorry, um, uh, what tools, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what tools do you use? Slack is the god. So yeah. you are gonna use Slack every day very many times. Mm -hmm. You are gonna use uh, Jira, I'm using Jira. I'm also using Basecamp, actually. I'm using Confluence for documentation. I'm using uh, Balsamic for mocking up for wireframing. I'm yeah. using Adobe for communic or Adobe or Sketch, depending on whether it's iOS or Android uh, operation system. So 
it's going to be the sketch or adobe for basically working with uh, designers mm -hmm. i'm using figma again for working with designers and uh, yeah the servers you are going to use if you are a developer you are going to use heroku bitbucket just basically all the github gitlab elastic search all the just usual suspects basically okay there is another tool which i used to kind of be accountable to myself myself it's it's called focusmate.com basically they match you with someone else and uh, someone else keep track of you whether you are working or not oh okay yes that's <laughs> that, a great can be, that can be dangerous <laughs> so it's like this we keep silence. We work on each of our, uh, we work on our tasks for like forty or fifty minutes, and yeah. then the session we kind of update each other on our progress. Mm -hmm. This way, you are kind of forcing your, yourself to work instead of making like additional cup of coffee, instead right. of just drinking water or just going for a walk. Right. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, can you provide a list of companies that hire, uh, these, um, project managers? Oh, and we see in the comments, can you repeat the tools that you use again? Sure. Other tools again. So for team management is Jira and Basecamp mm -hmm. for documentation is Confluence. It's part of Jira actually. Yeah. Yeah. Some teams will use also Trello. Mm -hmm. Uh, for communication, I'm always on Slack. Sometimes you will send emails if it's like status report to customer, but most of the time it's Slack. Mm -hmm. uh, so for design related UI UX design or graphic design or working with these guys, I'm going to use Adobe Sketch or Figma. I'm also using uh, Envision. It's for basically the customer experience to validating customer experience. Uh, and if you are in IT, again, you are, it's more like a developer program. So Bitbucket, Heroku, uh, some type of MySQL databases, GitLab, GitHub. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for that list. Um, one other question here. How do you handle tax compliance when you're hired by a foreign country that doesn't require CRA accountability? Okay. Uh, so you are you cannot escape CRA accountability, whatever so, you do. <laughs> so for the Americans on this call, CRA is the Canadian version of the IRS. Yes. Um, yeah, so so I'll let you take this question. Yes, yeah, so you are normally getting uh, you you register yourself as a W2 employee, basically. It means you are some type of a freelancer. So whenever you are receiving funds, you are receiving funds in the name of your company. And then from the name of company, you pay taxes. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Americans, they don't want you to hire you full time because uh, like they want you basically on contract most of the time. Yeah. So that they treat you as like another, another subcontractor of theirs. And then you are going to do your taxes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the same as a contractor project manager sure. that um, that a lot of people do as well. Um, by the way, that's another option for you guys in you know pursuing a career in project management. You can go the full time employee route. Uh, you can go remote project management, where you also you can do like become a contractor uh, project manage manager. Yeah. Basically, you would uh, kind of be um, uh, like um, you know paid. Uh, um, by based on the contract, usually that contract is a bit higher. It's usually between eighty to one hundred dollars per hour, so it's you know higher pay than the full time. The only thing is that, like, let's say the project is six months or one year, you may have a break in between until you find your next gig. So that's kind of the pros and cons of doing contractor. But that's a topic for another talk. Maybe I'll do another time um, to dive more into this. But for this talk, let's stick with remote project management. Okay, so moving on, uh, what are some some companies that um, hire uh, project managers? And I, I know you have a list that you can provide yeah. to us. So it's not my list. It's a list in a website I use every day. It's like we work remotely .com. I posted it in a Slack group. In mm -hmm. a Zoom group, actually. Yeah. So you go there, there are like hundreds of companies. Oh. And these are actually big companies. These are not startups. These are not boutique, you know, software development shops. 
So you will have companies like GitLab there, you will have companies like Zapier there, you will have companies like Elastic there. And uh, a lot of times more and more companies when they are starting, they're starting remotely. Right. So you, this trend is growing actually. So if you start working remotely at some point, you, it's gonna be very good. It's gonna be like, you are gonna be very you know, ahead of the curve basically. Just right. check, the, check the link out. Right. Uh, the link, you just have to get rid of the V. Um, I'll post it again um, in the chat. Uh, you just without the, there was an extra V at the end. Um, yeah, no worries. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, no, it's definitely part of the trend. You know, the traditional nine to five kind of jobs are um, getting less and less. Um, not that they're extinct, but there's a bit less of them. And then there's, there's been a rise of these kind of alternative work method methodologies. So, you know, if um, you're, especially like if you have a young child or something at home, it could be a good option to uh, look into having a remote role so that you can spend more time um, with your kids, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so what, so we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier during this talk, but I want to deep dive into this a bit more. Um, sure. What are the skill sets of a remote project manager that these companies are looking for? Uh, so most of the time they are looking for, first of all, accountability. Uh, they are looking for communication and they are also looking for previous work experience as a remote employer. That's the catch. So uh, I think most of the companies who are hiring remotely, they will say like the best evidence that the, per that the hire will work out is that the person worked remotely before. So it's pretty much like, you know, when you graduate university, they ask you for experience, right? To, to give you a job. So, and but they don't give you a job because you don't have experience and you cannot have experience because they don't give you a job. Okay. So it's a little bit like that when, for the remote work because they always want to see that you worked remotely before somewhere so that like you kind of learn your lessons on someone else's company before mm -hmm. coming to them. But uh, if, if you, like you will not, you will always be able to convince them that, uh, is going to work out. Sometimes companies give you some probation, you know, yeah, like three months, even sometimes more, so that they want to make sure that you are capable to work remotely. Right. A lot of time, remote. If you have to have a like type of character, you have to be able to sit down and do the job. A lot of time, like why remote employers fail is because they don't have like a boss next to them. They are not in front of the boss's eyes. So they will just uh, go for a walk, you know, just postpone the task as much as they can. They will just like, start working the day before the deadline. Yeah. You, you, you have to understand that this is basically a job. This is right. a job. It's not like hobby. It's not like part-time job. It's not like not that serious job. This is a job. You have people dependent on you. So you have to perform. A lot of times, like when, when something doesn't work out with your remote, job it's just because the person dropped the ball when it comes to accountability mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i see a couple of questions coming in here a lot of people are asking is the remote project management job only in it or uh or for software or can you do it in other industries as well besides i would say from what i see mm -hmm. uh i don't know 40 percent of all remote job is basically hiring a developer of some sort mm-hmm uh, but you will still be able to find job if you are a marketer, if you're a digital marketer, if you are on optimizing something like website optimization, if you're a project manager, product manager, product owner, or scrum master. If you are in traditional industries, if you are like in manufacturing, it's going to be really hard to find a remote job, actually. Really, really hard. I think the question was, can you find a job as a project manager outside of so the software um, industry, not uh, in like talking about the remote jobs? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, so I'll take that question. I'll give you a minute to think about that. I would say definitely yes, you can. Um, for example, like at Exams PM, we're not a software company, but we operate mostly online because we sell mostly to our students who are online. And you know, we have project managers um, helping us every day to kind of get organized. Um, I just as one example, we had to kind of plan out all of our content that's going out. So when is it like, um, you know, when is this agency going to talk to that agency? 
like so that we have this marketing material posted and that's going to coordinate with this other piece um, blog content that we're going to post that kind of thing right so that's just one example of you know why why you know exams pm we need project managers so i think any company with an online presence it doesn't have to necessarily be software will need a project kind of like need a project manager to manage their workflows that make sure that you know the day-to-day -day is it runs smoothly right yeah and uh, i'm mostly in it so that's why i'm kind of thinking whether it exists with like somewhere other than it but yeah I no reason why it wouldn't be. Yeah, you know, in e-commerce stores, um, they, yeah, they definitely need someone to manage all the orders, making sure custom, like everyone's doing their job, the customer support reps are re replying to all the inquiries, the orders are going out, the, all the advertising is still running, the products are in, in fulfillment, yeah. all those kind of things. So, base, yeah, so basically like, to answer uh, your questions yes like it's not just software companies that's looking for remote project manager i think any company uh i think any company with an online presence will need um uh like project managers um yeah, yeah. um can you elaborate on the on how to answer the interview questions especially the open-ended behavioral uh behavioral uh, questions so give me an example maybe um uh, that's a good question all right the person who asked that in the can elaborate on the chat we can come back can please yeah we can come back <laughs> to that if you guys want like an example of how to answer a specific interview question um let us know what the exact question is um i do have a question so kind of like circling back to what we mentioned before you yeah. said the interview process was was four, four or five interviews right so you just mentioned what happened in the first two what happens in yeah. the next three so first two, if you pass first two, it's gonna get serious from there. So at that point, there is probably like 10 people remaining. Mm -hmm. So for these 10 people, they are gonna give you some type of homework. This yeah. is a task that you are gonna perform at home and just submit the report to them. And it differs from company to company. I have given a task for a senior project manager role. It took me I don't know, like 70 hours to complete because it was whole, just create like whole backlog, create the roadmap, create the, you know, like find out how, how much resources you need, what's the delivery date. It took me like a lot, it, it, like almost two weeks to complete and that was the deadline basically in two weeks, send it out. But paradoxically, I applied for VP of project role and they give me like really easy two hour long questionnaires of some sort. So I completed it within like an hour or something and I submitted and they liked it. So you will definitely gonna get some type of homework as a third level of interview, but uh, it depends on a company what kind of and how tough it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. So if you pass this, at that point, they are gonna uh, start talking to you. At that point, you are gonna basically be introduced to your colleagues to the CEO, to the CTO, if it's a small company. So in my case, I got introduced to the CEO, the C, uh, CTO. I spoke with the hiring managers. The, the, the questions are basically about uh, whether you are a cultural fit, whether you are a nice person, whether they are, you are a person they want to work with. So at that point, no one questions your, your professional abilities. At that point, they all know that you are good they all know that you you know what they want you to know. At that point, it's more about soft skills. It's more about what kind of person you are, whether you are like a nice person, whether you are a person they 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 will enjoy working with or not. Right, right. Um, okay, so um, we have some interview questions coming in. How do you handle multiple projects simultaneously? As an interview question, if you got that in an interview. Yeah. So it's. Uh, you are going to basically roll out on uh, what's the priority. So if the project A is priority, so you have to focus on it while not while still keeping track of project B so that the project B or project C will not be late. So you are prioritizing based on how important the project is for your company. You are prioritizing based on what's the delivery date. So this is uh, like, yeah, this is uh, one of the most asked questions and it's kind of like easy answer you're given. The, the, they want to hear like the word priority, prioritization when, when, when this type of question comes. And whether they follow up with how do you prioritize the project task? 
Yeah, and that, at that point, you are going to mention whether like the deadline is close, whether if you are like on, uh, on, on in, in, or basically whether if you're doing a good progress for one project, the project is not late, you don't need to fast track it or you don't need to crash the project. So you will say like, okay, some of the resources, if you're doing this good with this project, some of the resources I can allocate to another project. Mm -hmm. Also, you can answer it saying that like it depends what is the, which, which project gives like a better benefit for the company from ROI standpoint. So if you have a like R&D project that potential is going to bring your company millions and you have some kind of like software modernization pro project that is basically internal, yeah. customers want it. So make sure you say like, okay, I'm going to go for R&D project because it's for customers and the return on investment is huge. Whereas if it's modernization project, I can kind of like postpone it. I can keep it for later when we have like a slower, slower like project flow. So yeah, you are basically, this is the questions for your reasoning, mm -hmm. for reasoning and uh, basically experience. So mm -hmm. tell them it's basic based on deadline and based on return on investment and how important is the project for your company. Mm -hmm. sometimes, um, so sometimes they will say like, okay, you know what? Both of the projects are very important. Both of the projects are huge on ROI. Both of the projects have to happen simultaneously and there is no way that we can postpone something. At that point, you, have, you know, you tell them, we have limited resources, we need to bring in contractors, we need to bring in some more programmers or whatever your project is doing. So you, you basically need to, you, you will say like, I'm gonna request additional resources and I'm gonna requ request additional funds uh, from the contingency reserve or somewhere else, a management reserve to cover the fund. Right, right, right. So all the pr terminology you, you guys learn in the pin box is things. coming back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I still remember. Oh, I think we. Hello? Oh, I think we, oh, yes, oh the yes. screen was frozen for one second. Um, okay. uh, yeah, so I was, I was saying to everybody, all the terms and all the stuff you learn in PMBOK, it's not just to pass an exam, you actually do use it in real life too. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so next interview question is, that we have in the chat here is, do you encounter conflict among your team members and how do you handle that since you're working remotely? Yeah. So uh, most of the time when you are working remotely, the conflict is going to be because of lack of communication. So someone didn't communicate clearly his task so that another, ta another person is doing the same task. So now they end up doing the same task, both of them, and like one of them basically just like miscommunicated. Yeah. So in this case, when these kind of situations arise, make it's very important to kind of not to lose it. So you have to establish like ground rules. I think that's how it's called in PMP. Yeah. That whatever happened, everyone has to be civilized and respectful not to just fall down and just not to go crazy basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, other than that, you explain to people that this is not a big deal. We, this is the mistake. We, we have to learn from the mistakes and you do not compromise. Don't try to hide the project. Don't try to hide the hide the pro like pro you know the the problem. Make sure you confront it. Make sure that everyone knows that what what was the solution, so that no one is doing the same mistake again. And don't criticize like mistaken party in front of everyone. That's the worst thing you can do because at that point they are gonna take it very personal. Mm -hmm. If so the ground, the, basically the rule of thumb is if you are giving someone a credit, do it in public. If you are blaming someone, do it in private. That's a good rule of thumb. That's a great rule of thumb. Uh, next question is, have you encountered scam companies before? Uh, I don't know whether they are scam or not. I think they are very like, uh, so a lot of camp companies, they will come to you, they will do two rounds of interview and they will disappear basically. Mm -hmm. If it's a really small company, uh, like five people team, a startup, they will just do two rounds, they will disappear, they will come back in two months, they will say, you know what, we had like some problems. 
So can we kind of resume the process? At that point, you have to decide whether you want to work with this type of people or not. Okay. I think I will, I, a couple of times I said like, okay, I'm already employed, I'm not interested in the position or I'm just not interested in the position, that's it. Right. Because this kind of behavior will continue. Mm -hmm. If they hire you, this kind of behavior will continue. They will just disappear. They will give you tasks. No one will help you. So you don't want to work with this companies with this type of companies. Right. It's not a scam company. It's just like very unreliable companies. Mm. Scam companies normally they they you can't really find them in like angel list or in like indeed yeah or dreamo.com because they kind of vet the companies. Right, right, absolutely. Um, and let's talk about recruiters. Um, I know that you yeah. work a lot with recruiters. So how do you find recruiters? How do you manage the relationship? Um, how do you, like how do you use the recruiters to help you find opportunities? Well, uh, when I was just starting my career, it was really hard to work with recruiters because they were not interested in finding me a job because I was just a student without, just like new alumni with no experience. Nowadays, it's kind of shifted, so you will get a lot of, uh, I'm getting, not a lot, but just a couple of emails every week about some type of company that maybe will be interested in me. So whether I'm, whether do, whether, whether I'm okay for a recruiter to proceed with my resume or something like this. So recruiters normally find you if you are like kind of experienced, at least a little bit, especially if you're technical. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when I'm working for a remote company, I when I when you're searching for remote jobs, so you don't need to work with recruiters at all, mm. because uh, most of remote companies they are just out there in the web, so they they have like apply button. A lot of them will say like we don't accept third part third party interviews, we don't accept third party resumes. Recruiters, please do not contact us. So it's actually against you, against your best interest if you work with recruiters. Right. right. If you are remote, don't work with recruiters at all. And recruiters are not really very knowledgeable about the remote job market because right. it's something very new for them. Right. Uh, they, they, they will much rather work with a bank who, who needs you in downtown office than work with a company who is just located in Silicon Valley, something like that. Right. right. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. now, now let's talk about the post hire. You are now hired as a project manager. Yeah. What do you do to keep your remote job? Yeah, first of all, uh, first of all, you go through documentation of the company a lot. So you have to understand if there's a project uh, that is you taking over, you have to go through documentation to see what happened, who was the decision makers, who are the parties in, involved, who are the key stakeholders, who are the stakeholders with high impact. So you have to go to documentation to understand the project uh, and to understand the company too. The, normally the companies have this like a, a kind of like how you have to work with them. Yeah. A lot of companies, they will have a, the, a, a lot of people in the company, they will have like specific style they want to be worked with. So for example, someone hates emails. So for that person, you will basically go for Slack messages. Mm -hmm. So uh, another person, they work... I don't know, for like from 8 to 12 and they work next time from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So you have to count that too. So you will learn like habits of your team. You will have, you will learn the habits of your like upper management and you have to basically juggle between them. But other than that, uh, you have to also stay motivated. Mm. In order to stay motivated, I normally wake up I wake up, I put, even if I'm working from the home office, I'm not gonna just, you know, the wear shorts or slippers or like don't wear like t-shirt or something. <laughs> I think it's as a job. I'm take, when I wake up, I put like my casual dress, the, the same thing I will, I will use to go to the office. So mm -hmm. it kind of puts me in the work mood. You know, I kind of treat it as a work mood. I go to my office, the home office, and I, I make sure no one bothers me. And if you have family, wife or parents or kids, you have to make sure they understand that even though you are home, but you are also not home, not available. Mm. Because when people see that you are home, they will assign you tasks. They will say like, do this, do that. But yeah. make sure they understand that you are, while you are at home, but you are also like absent. You are not available for them. Right. 
Right. So how do you organize your day, day to day, um, while you are working as a pro uh, yeah. remote project manager? So every morning, uh, early morning, uh, you will have like a daily scrum, your stand up meeting, your status update meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's how my day starts. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on this meeting, I'll know whether I need to resolve a blocker or not, whether mm -hmm. like my developer needs me, needs me to do something to kind of help him to do this job. If there is something of that sort, if there is like a blocker, if uh, there is like, uh, for example, I have to communicate with customer for requirements, so something is not clear. So a whole day I will spend on communicating with the requirement, getting it, making sure that the requirement is part of the scope, it's not the new requirement, otherwise I will just generate the change request form. Sure. So I will make sure that uh, like I'm resolving the issue for the developer. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the stuff like that, uh, you always have uh, stuff like documentation. You have to document everything. You always have uh, some meetings to attend. You will always have some new project assigned to you. So currently I'm leading like three projects. So uh, you will not have like free time. So I start with the daily scrum. Then maybe at the same date, I will have some type of uh, status update meeting with another for another project. Uh, normally I will communicate with one or two customers about the questions I have about the project. Uh, I'm also doing QA, so it, it takes a lot of time. So when my developer does something, they will let me know. I will go and like do the QA. It's, it's very time consuming job, especially if you're doing it manually. Yeah. So you will not have time to just, uh, you know, right. mess around. Right. How do you stay accountable and motivated then while you're working remotely? So when I just started, I was just fired up. I will be very excited at the very, very beginning and in two, three months, I will get depressed basically because of that. I will just give all my energy for two, three months and then I will just be really like kind yeah. of in a relaxed, depressed mode. So yeah. nowadays I learn how to be more balanced person, how just to, you know, not treat it as a sprint, but rather as a marathon. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm using Focusmate actually a lot, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. So every time I have like a lengthy task I don't want to do, I will schedule a meeting with some accountable partner Mm -hmm. and, uh, basically the partner will make sure I'm doing the task. Mm -hmm. That's great. But, uh, yeah. I'm also like meditating just to keep cool, keep calm, you know, just not to be nervous. So <clears throat> it helps actually. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, and then uh, we have a question here. Can you share a portfolio example that uh, you recommended for the application process? Uh, uh, there are uh, templates available for technical project portfolios, but I am not sure how to create a portfolio for a PM experience. So what I did myself, I'm like in process of updating my portfolio actually. So it's not available. It will be available. It should be by next Monday. So mm -hmm. I'm normally going to like Wix.com, Wix.com, okay. and you are creating basically your website. They have a couple of good portfolios. You, they will give you a template like website like your basically for your own website and what you want to do you basically print screen your product you you blur every sensible information every yeah. sensitive information because it, it could become an issue yeah and you you show the flow of the screens like what, what like from which screen you go where what you did on the screen and uh in my case i will also have like a technical stuff there like a architect technical architecture of the product I'll have uh, the QA results of the product, but make sure you blur everything because it could, I I was not in trouble, but uh, like, it's good that for one of my employer, past employers, I asked them and they said like, okay, no, not this project. I have You can demo everything else, but not this project because it's our right. project. So make sure you either blur it completely and just show the, like a whole diagram or get approval from your past employer before, before showing everything. Because technically, even though you have done it, but you have done it within the part of being part of their company. So it's, it's kind of their, their asset. Their asset, right. And yeah. then a lot of people might make you sign an NDA agreement, something like that. Yeah, I've signed a couple of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I think I have one last question for you. And that's that like you were saying that, you know, right now you get a lot of offers because you have a lot of experience no, now. Some offers. Okay. Some offers. <laughs> some offers now because you have experience as a pro um, remote yeah. project manager. But how did you get your first job? So for people who are listening, but 
you know, maybe they don't have any experience and they want to break into this field. So how did you get your first opportunity without a perf- like you don't have anything to put in your portfolio? Yes. What would you do? So uh, when I was a student, I studied in Armenia, Switzerland. So when I was studying in Switzerland, I was, uh, I, I had some idea of my own business. So I was managing my like i have like two person team back in back at home so i was managing my basic team from switzerland so it was kind of a remote job even though i was just working for myself so when during the first interview i i said them okay i have work experience working remotely because i did this thing so it was a proof for them that i have a i'll be okay working remotely so in that you can do pretty similar thing make sure like within your life at some point you communicated with someone overseas, you have done a project with someone overseas, or maybe in another city, or you, th- there is definitely something you have done while not being in the same room. So put it as a remote work experience, because it doesn't matter whether you are working from home, like, or whether, like now me and Helena were talking, we're both in Toronto, but it wouldn't matter if Tor- Helena was in like UK and I was in like some, like Australia. So it would be same experience. This is basically a remote project, like very small remote project. So these type right. of things, maybe if something a little lengthy, just put it there as something you have done as an experience what being remote employer or employee. Right, right. That's a, that's a good advice. That's a good advice. To start small, maybe you can even volunteer somewhere. Um, something that you can put onto onto your resume right and you can always uh you can always um approach uh um what's it called uh so there's a website um where you can volunteer for online businesses and do some work for them it's called genm.co um and uh, we've had people um, i've had people in the past who has worked for exams pm from there and it just basically allows them to uh like get some work experience um but uh you know the comp- they're not getting paid and uh, and, yeah. and uh you know i think we just pay a small fee to be part of um part of the community to get access to all the people and that's how they make money so um so yeah so that's an option as well for those of you who want uh, i know we're coming up on the hour um and i know this session is scheduled for one hour um one hour long. So I just want to ask, does anyone have any other questions for Arthur before we end this session? Uh, the end the session. Uh, it's called genm.co. Um, let me just look it up and I can paste it in there. Uh, but in, I should mention you're not going to get paid from these guys. Um, and uh, it's a lot of students that's on here, so I'm not even sure if it's really um, appropriate for um, for uh, uh, the skill level that you guys want to go on. Um, but it's called GenM.co. If you guys want to uh, come on here and basically, um, you know, just um, get like a, some remote job experiences from um, from a company. It's generally pretty competitive for the company to hire someone from this. Actually, you have to really sell yourself because the other person is not getting paid. So they have a lot of options to choose from. Um, so um, we've had interns in the past who came to exams PM from this program. So mm-hmm. that's how I knew about them. Um, okay, so that's it for this session. Thank you, Arthur, so much for coming on board, sharing all this great information with okay. us. Um, and thank you for sharing all your knowledge with us. And uh, it's, it was a pleasure speaking with you. I hope that you will come on board again <laughs> at a future date to share more, more information. Yeah. Um, and for anyone listening, if you guys want to um, become the next author, share your work experiences with the rest of the group, um, please feel free to shoot us an email support at examspm.com and we can schedule you in and just helps the entire community when we all share information, right? So if you want to do that, share your career, um, share how you got jobs, um, shoot an email to support at examspm.com. So we see a lot of thank you messages. So again, Arthur, thank you so much. My pleasure, guys. Like really, let me know next time if I can help, like definitely. Yeah, perfect. Yep.
I think all your software experience was definitely very valuable. So thank you yep. for coming on board. Thank you. Everyone. Okay. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Bye for now. Bye-bye.